Welcome to Structures 2 Design Project. The Design of Different Elements in a Domestic Shed by Dylan Thomas, Yuvesh Naidu and Luke Warner. The aim of the assignment was to build an understanding of the structural design and construction of a domestic shed. Two key components, load types, the types of loads that are applied to the shed, and connections, the connections that transfer and support these loads. Together we used our understanding of loads and connections to start the basic design. In construction of steel systems, there are generally two types of connections, bolted or welded, that give the connection a specific amount of rigidity. When designing the domestic shed, the loads on the building determine the supports that can be used. The support connections may be welded or bolted depending on the required strength capacity of the connection, as well as economical factors. As seen on the left, we have welded connections, and as seen on the right, we have bolted connections. There are three types of connections that are commonly used in construction today, known as roller, fixed and pin supports. Roller supports only support one force that is perpendicular to it, however, does not support any other type of forces. This specific support can only resist perpendicular forces, not parallel, horizontal or moment. Pin supports only resist vertical and horizontal loads, but is subject to moment, therefore will allow structural members to rotate but will stop any other directional movement. Fixed rigid supports constrain members in all directions, including rotational movement, therefore forming a rigid connection. Structural load types. There are different loads that act upon a structure and the nature of these loads varies between the design, materials and location of the structure. For the design of the domestic shed, three load types were considered. Dead load, live load and wind load. Dead load. The constant or permanent load that rests on a structure. This is the weight of the structure and anything attached to the structure. Live load. The live load of a structure is the accumulation of all the movable objects in the structure. Live loads varies between the structure and depends on the usage of the structure. Wind load. Due to the widespread use of lighter materials and time efficient building techniques in construction, the wind load affecting a structure has become a major factor to consider. The structure, in this case a shed, must be strong enough to resist a horizontal load and there must be a sufficient anchorage to prevent the shed from blowing away if the dead load is not adequate to hold it down. The design of the domestic shed. Here is a summary of the key findings of each stage of the design process. Load, live load and wind loads for raft design. It is important to find the minimum and maximum dead loads because at the beginning of construction, the dead loads are different than the dead loads of the finished structure and the structure behaves differently. For wind loads, you must determine correct wind category as different categories will affect the ultimate and serviceability limit state. You need to find the most se severe load combination for downward and upward pressures. Design and selection of Perlin member. When selecting the purlin member, it was important to choose one that serves both inward and outward loadings. Ultimate limit state and serviceability limit state had to be also checked before a member could be chosen. Girt design and selection. Girt design was very similar to purlin design as the same steps for purlin design were followed for girt design. Due to there being no live load within the walls of the shed, the serviceability limit state requirements were unable to be completed. A member was chosen Z30024 double lap span but because the capacity of the member was less than the acceptable capacity another member had to be chosen to suit. Rafter design. For rafter design it was important to find the supported area of the rafter first. For the design of the rafter we had to first assume the weight of the rafter was 0.1. The calculations for the rafter design were first calculated with the rafter self weight of 0.1, but once the actual rafter member was chosen, we were able to substitute the real self weight of the rafter and check that the member was adequate. Finding top and bottom flange compression for rafter. Finding the compression in the top and bottom flange was done to see if any fly bracing was needed. For the top flange, the compression value was well within the capacity of the member whereas the compression experienced in the bottom flange was greater than the capacity of the member and therefore fly bracing was needed to restrain the bottom flange laterally. Note, it is important to find how much fly bracing is needed to support the compressive loads of the rafter so that the member can resist the compressor's forces. Final selection of rafter. 
Once we chose the rafter member suitable for the shed, we had to redo the load testing and serviceability limit state calculations to double check that the member was still adequate for the shed. Note, due to the wind load on the rafter being less than the minimum 0.25 kPa live load stated in the Australian standards, we just assumed that the live load was 0.25. Column design. The steps for the column design were similar to those of the raft design. The columns must be designed to resist buckling and pure compression. We tested a possible member to suit and we found it to be safe. However, it was much larger and not economical. We then had to choose a smaller section. We checked for compression and bending to find the member to be the best option. Design for bracing system. For the roof bracing system, we had to find the net pressure coefficient using table 3.1 of the AS4055 for serviceability and ultimate state we had to design for wind pressure. After finding the suction and pressure loads that will be subjected to the house, we then timesed it by the tributary area of the shed. The diagonal bracing members were designed and any member in compression was removed as diagonal members only resisted tension forces. The use of truss and analysis to calculate the loads in each member of the truss, which included the struts and bracing. Due to the trusses being symmetrical, we could assume the opposite side will have identical responding loads. The same was done for the Y direction of the roof. This assignment has given us the tools and knowledge to successfully design a domestic shed capable of hoisting a car engine. Through our understanding of loads, such as dead loads, live loads and wind loads, we were able to design all aspects of the shed to withstand the required forces. Thank you for watching.